So, just got done doing a ride on the Can-Am. It's 2.40 in the afternoon, and yeah, we did go riding out in the desert. <laughs> uh, summer day, we got done about 1 o'clock. 1, 1 1.30. So, uh, you know, I changed this motor out last night. Downstairs Goodman unit. This is the motor that uh, I refused to replace with it. It's tight, and then it breaks free. It did that, like, two or three months ago, and I said, it, but it doesn't have, like, side play, really? It's just tight. So I took it apart, polished it, oiled it up for shits and giggles just to see. And um, it lasted two, three months longer. Wanted to see if it would get through the whole summer. But it uh, did not. So I'm going to put my good motor, my new mo one of the new motors I actually have in stock the whole time. Put it in there. So anyway, we have both units running full tilt, three and a half ton, three ton over there. 15 amps for the uh, three and a half ton Goodman. And right now, what do we got for the, this is running on 60 hertz, so it's at three tons. Four amps. Nine, four amps. That is because my solar, my off-grid solar, not the solar. Everybody sees these freaking inverters on my on-grid solar and thinks that it's connected to this. It's not. Off-grid solar, coming up DC power right here, coming from my backyard grid. I'm going to pull it out, and at 4 amps, it's going to shoot up to what it would be. And it's 13 to 14 amps on the utility, so it's let's just say 9 amps is what this is covering right now. So that's pretty good for 2.40 in the afternoon when it's really hot, 114 degrees. Those panels are producing at least like a, more than two thirds of the power. Nice. Something, or about two thirds. No? It's uh, 13 amps, so yeah. A little over two thirds my solar's carrying on high. So right now if this went down to 40 hertz, low cool, down to two tons, um, it would probably carry the whole load. Obviously right now, it, I'm not gonna do it, but it'll drop voltage, but yeah. It, Last summer, before I put this auto transformer in here, this did the best it could do was cover 50% when I got the when the uh, voltage was high enough, if 50%. Because now that I realize that this voltage was so damn high coming to my house, like you can see right here, 243 earlier said 245 volts. You know, it gets real high, and then the resulting DC convert, you know, rectified DC going to the bus was so high I wasn't able to draw off my 330 volt solar panel bus very well but now that this knocks this down to 225 volts from 245 or whatever and then uh, the result of DC is uh, about 15 20 volts less so it yeah it's awesome it's so simple too there's no electronics in there it's just both sources are just fed to the same VFD that's it that's awesome. So now, um, of course, it's weekend rates, but it was Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. was our peak time of use where they gouged you. It would be it's six cents a kilowatt hour outside that time, and then 24 cents per kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour in that time. So that's when we would set back our thermostat at noon. We would set it back to like 80 upstairs, and we keep it at 80 till I came home. And then it'd be 80 until 7. Sometimes I'd bump it down a degree or two, but it would be trying to recover during that peak time. That sucks. But we'd be at the hottest during the peak time. But now that I have the off-grid solar tied to it, I actually run my temperature lower once it's noon because that's right when the sun comes over and hits my backyard west side panels over there and off-grid panels and is able to carry all the load on first stage and two-thirds the load on full capacity shit that's where that's where i run this thing the most man so now we're running our house you know cooler than we ever have and we've been here like five years going our six years so this summer we're running the temperatures lower we actually don't set it back upstairs i let this one set back uh up 79 or whatever 78 i think actually because we have people home all the time now where they weren't before but this one i just run pretty much i, I just 
drop it down and I got the two stage program so it has to go two or three degrees above before it goes to high. I just have this one pretty much just run on non stop during that time and just let the upstairs run this cool and cool and cool and hopefully some of that air goes downstairs, you know, it drops and the hot air rises. <laughs> Kinda take some of the load off of that one that's on hundred percent on utility power. So anyway, that's pretty much how it's going now. Yeah. That is not what the Ecobee is for. Yes. What? Yeah, it is. What are you playing now? A pond burning body. What is it? A pond. Upon a burning body. Yep. You're listening to a band called Upon a Burning Body. Yep. And you like that stuff? Yeah. Do you headbang to it? I was a couple times ago. When I wasn't looking? Oh, yep. Oh my oh, goodness, no, child. Do that with me. Okay. So 77 down here. Yeah, it's, well, weekend we turned it down a little colder. But this type of days, your ACs are going to run almost all the time. Also, I just came inside. You know, it's like almost 3 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, it saw me. See, these things see you walk up because they have those sensors, which you can see in the camera, but you can't see it with the naked eye. 75 degrees. See how I set it real low? But what it'll do is it stall. It'll switch between first and second stage right there. I turned off all the automatic stuff that Ecobee does. I turned off the freaking eco stuff or whatever where it takes control. That's the government coming in the back door. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I just have it set to where it has to be like over two degrees where it brings, or two degrees to bring on high, full speed, which you saw it was on full speed. So it'll probably keep cooling down and then it'll uh, toggle. But being that I went from a four ton to a three ton for upstairs, I wouldn't be surprised if it just kind of, on the hottest days, it probably will stall before getting close enough to, you know, go to, down to low speed. And that's okay. It's still 75 degrees in here at three o'clock. <laughs> and it's a dry heat. So to us, 75 degrees is pretty cool here in Arizona. People that are where it's humid and not as hot, they run it like 68 to 70, you know, to that's what they have to do to get it to dry the air out. Here it's an intense dry heat. So um, 114, almost 115 outside, like 112 now. It said the weather was going to be 114. Maybe it didn't hit it, but you see our humidity is nice and low. Sunday, tomorrow, high. Oh, yeah, see, today, our high is 114 today. Or no, 116. And tomorrow, high is 116. It's going to be 114 in the evening, like 6 o'clock. So, yeah. Maybe it just backed off a little bit right now, or maybe it's going to get worse. But it's running pretty much balls out. That's okay running four amps to keep that condenser running <laughs> that's awesome and then of course it's probably pulling about two amps for the blower at most it's an ecm when it drops the first stage it's like way under an amp so it's awesome now sunday with both units running balls out for the afternoon 15 amps on the goodman one you can see there our utility voltage is kind of high again People say it's because of the solar being tied to it. Three amps. Only using, whoop, just toggle the four. So it's about three to four amps again to run full capacity on this one. I'm sure if I pull this off, it's gonna be under voltage. No, it actually, the solar is still able to run this thing on a full. T I could rewire this to drop the voltage down even more. So I might try that. Just look at my garage for the instructions for this thing. And I put them in there. <laughs> I highlighted it. So to drop the 240 down to 225, wow, I had a good memory, 225, you use uh, three right here. This is how I have it. So to go from 240 down to 212, you go to diagram four, this one. So I just need to wire, rewire it like that, try it out. Uh, I'm gonna give that a try. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the solar power too. Shouldn't back feed to that because it's rectifiers, but I ain't taking that chance. That's that's getting really knocked on your ass voltage right there. Got a little bit of wind here, so. Okay, change the tap from this to this, which equals this. Hope I got everything on in the right order. So if not, watch for sparks. Of course, our voltage is down just a little bit here. 
and that was the thing when my voltage actually drops down I didn't want it to go too low but I never see this thing even get down to 240 so I don't think it's gonna so let's see if it's still enough let's see if I still have that wired it's a good sign it's ramping up give that a second to load up the pressures 13 amps it's getting up to be about where it goes when it's on uh, 60 hertz and doing this little thing I have this ECM connected to the DC bus and yeah it's an old regular GE ECM showing it in some past videos I don't have AC power connected to it I have DC power going to it and it works but every once in a while you hear it kind of hunt a little bit but screw it all right our voltage Utility voltage is 244 and our uh, amperage is at 13. So now when I reconnect the off-grid solar, let's see if it now covers the whole load automatically. And indeed, it just dropped to zero. And this is only about 10, 15 minutes after when I did the last video clip when it was drawing three to four amps. So I was still robbing myself power when my the sun is still up. You know, in prime, hitting my off-grid panels back there. Not to be confused with my on-grid stuff. That's separate. Utility power, DC bus, both go into this unit that has a variable for frequency drive. So it's that's how I have it sharing power or the utility taking power. So zero amps. Again, if I unplug it, 60 seconds for this amp meter there, 13 amps. Again, DC bus, and it's dropping it to zero, even with this thing running on full speed. So it's actually at three tons, drawn all completely off of the sun. Utility power, nay, not needed. So that is awesome. I've been waiting for it to get hotter and more into the summer to uh, see how this thing was going to work. So. I'll put the cover back on. We're gonna leave the auto transformer like that. Okay. Got the cover back on, put the instructions back in there, which is a nice place to keep them. 245 volts on the utility power. It's not drawing shit. That's so awesome. All right, so now we'll uh, go another month or so and see if we get even more benefit and now that I know that this thing can run high speed totally on the Sun when the Sun's at its prime even though it's gotten hot now maybe I'll watch it for another day or two but if I, I know it can do second stage then I'm probably gonna change my uh, adjustments on that Ecobee to let this thing to pull down the temperature more on on second stage once it's in uh, that prime time of the day so basically when it hits like noon or maybe a little earlier you know the sun does have to go over my two-story house before it hits those panels but so once it hits like 11 30 to noon this time of year i'll probably just crank that temperature down way down so and let it latch on a second stage cooling full capacity and just put a sucker home man the more it could cool off of this unit, the less the downstairs one will run, which doesn't get the benefit of the off-grid solar. It just runs off utility power, which is more than this one draws. So, yeah, pretty awesome. So anyway, stay tuned over the next months or whatever as I fine-tune this thing. Kind of see how it performs.